People are often ask what to do with carnivorous plants over the winter months, and it surprises people to realise that the majority of commonly grown plants are actually temperate, they're North American, and consequently like our own native uh, plant species, they, they relief in the summer and die back during the winter. So during the winter months, um, certainly this late in the year, December, the plants are starting to look pretty tatty. Now's the time to start taking action to, to prepare them for the winter rest period, which they have to have. We'll start with the Venus flytrap, which of course everybody knows. This plant here has lost all of its longer, larger summer leaves and is, is left instead with a, a, a flat basal rosette of, of small leaves which will remain on the plant over the winter months. Occasionally a plant will lose all of its leaves but that's absolutely fine. With all these plants when you're cutting them back, first thing to remember is it can be messy work. So dress appropriately, definitely not Sunday best. So with the Venus flytrap, all we need to do is remove the dead material that's on the plant and as the leaves have died back entirely all we need to do is pull them out. They come off pretty easily, just put all the dead material away from the plant. The main reason for doing this of course is to reduce down any risk of the plant rotting over the winter months. So remove any dead parts. There we are, and that's what we're left with. The flat basal rosette and this leaf here which is, is rapidly dying back so we can actually remove that as well. So if you're removing a leaf that's, that's still partly live, just put your finger in the base of the plant in the middle just to hold it steady and then pull, and in theory it will come out whole, there we are. Another type of plant that uh, people quite often grow are the sundews. Now some of the sundews are South African and of course therefore they, they live all year round, they're in full growth. Some species, like the North American plants, are native species, and this one here, this is the Drostra binata from Australia. Um, this one also, as you can see, dies back, loses its growth entirely. And the easiest way to, to tidy this up is either with a pair of scissors, or I tend to use these uh, tokery shears, just to hold the plant and then give it a pretty severe haircut, removing all the dead material. And there we are, all the dead material is gone, you're just leaving the, the old leaf bases, they can remain on the, on the plant there. That plant's now ready for the winter rest period. <coughs> now the Saracenias. There are eight species of Saracenia and countless hybrids. They tend to die back at different times depending on the plant. Some of the plants retain their leaves through the winter months, some of them will retain their leaves into the winter and then they'll die off sort of late winter, early spring as the new ones come through. Let's start with Saracenia purpurea. Now this is a species that retains its leaves through the winter months and they die off um, in the spring as the new ones come out as I just said. So this one here, the old leaves that are dead are actually last year's ones. So what we're going to do is simply support the plant with your hands and pull clean away from the plant. <coughs> Remove each of the dead leaves. You also see this particular plant's got a flower stalk on it as well. We'll remove that separately in a minute. I tend to find that the flower stalks are much tougher and fibrous, I guess, because they've got to be held up <coughs> uh, for the entire growing season. They're, they're a much stronger, stronger tissue. And you've removed all of the the old leaves simply with the the, the um, pair of secateurs or with the topiary shears or scissors. Just snip off the flower stalk at the bottom. There, now that guy is also ready for, for the winter rest period. <coughs> this is Saracenia oreophylla. Now this species has a much shorter growing season than some of the other plants and you tend to find that certainly in a hot summer that they'll start dying back as early as August time. Now this species is quite unusual in the fact that the, the leaves, the pitchers themselves, will die back entirely to their bases. A lot of the plants will die back but leave their leaf bases alive. So this guy is actually fairly straightforward. All you need to do again is support the plant and pull the leaves out like this. You see they'll actually come out with the leaf base attached. It's simply a case of go through pulling out each of these leaves. If they're a little reluctant, just give them a bit of a twist that will loosen them. We'll do several at a time, there we are. with here 
is the plant's winter leaves. A couple of the species, uh, certainly Oriophylla and Saracenia flava, produce what are called phyllodes, they're winter leaves, flat, non-carnivorous leaves. Um, with Saracenia oriophylla, they're always sickle shaped, which is a good way of identifying this uh, when you're comparing it with, say, Saracenia flava. Some of the clones can be fairly similar. The, uh, the winter leaves in Saracenia flava are always sword shaped and, and held upright. In here, you'll see there's a few dead winter leaves, obviously from last winter, just to remove those in the same fashion. Finish that later. And finally, this is Saracenia flava. Now you can see on here, some of the leaves have died back entirely, some of them have died back sort of midway. But obviously we don't want to be in a situation where every week or so we're having to go through plants, removing bits of the leaf here and there. Really you want to do the whole thing in one hit. Um, so I tend to leave the plants till early November, when they're looking pretty rough, and then take the whole lot down in their entirety. Now two ways of doing this, with this species, we can either, as we did with the others, just pull the leaves out, which can be a little untidy, especially with these larger leaves getting in the way. But it's just as easy and straightforward to hold the leaves as a group, cut them off, and take them down that way. So get rid of those. A bit more manageable now. You can see here what's left. We've got the, the, the green leaf bases from the, plant, uh, from the leaves that have died back halfway. Leave those in, in situ for now. What we're eager to remove is the dead material off of the plant. The, the material that will, if, 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 um, if the plant's going to get attacked by any sort of fungus, it will attack the dead material. Um, something like grey uh, mould, botrytis, can go through the dead material into the live rhizome and actually kill the plant. So it's pretty important that you take all the dead growth off of the plants every year. So simply supporting the, the plant with one hand, just twist and pull the old leaf bases out. Go over the plant, pulling two or three out at a time, and when you've, when you've finished, obviously that plant's then ready for the winter rest period as well. Now I've mentioned this rest period a few times. These plants, because they're temperate, they need hot summers, cold winters. If they don't get that cold winter rest period, they'll try and grow on through and gradually die out. Which is why if you see carnivorous plants for sale in, say, garden centres and similar, at this time of year in full growth, they've been forced, they're not going to last very long, and frankly I wouldn't bother buying them. These plants, when they're in this state, they need to be kept cold. So in a cold greenhouse like this, um, uh, on a cold night the ambient temperature in here is pretty much within a degree or so what it is outside. Uh, if it goes down to minus 10 that's absolutely fine. The fly traps, all of the Saracenia pitch plants and the cold hardy sundews can all take that low temperature.